Hello and welcome back to the channel and you join us today in the village of Southampton where we will be comparing electric cars. Apparently they are the future or some say they are. We are going to be comparing the Nissan Leaf over there and the Lexus over there. Don't ask me about electric cars, I don't really know much about them but we have Nissan Leaf that's fully electric and we've got Lexus over there which is a petrol hybrid. Uh, let's go around. Have a look at them. So typical British weather, it's now raining. However, that's not gonna stop us because we're gonna talk about the Lexus, uh, one of James's cars that he owns. It's the petrol hybrid. And yeah, let's, let's talk about how that compares with the Nissan. So tell me James, so, how, how this car works. It's not a plug-in, is it? So you obviously we've come from the Leaf, which you plug in and you have to obviously require to charge the battery. Yeah. Hybrid, don't have to worry about any of that. So it's another option. So if Leaf isn't for you and you want something with greater range or you've got the range anxiety, you do a lot of miles every day, um, or you just want the reassurance of having an engine, hybrid might be better for you. Um, this is obviously one of the options. So hopefully some normally say hybrid, people jump to the Prius, but there's loads of options out there. Most manufacturers now make hybrid vehicles. Mm. This one being the uh, Lexus GS450H, which is the 3.5 litre V6 version with the electric motors. I'm glad you so. can remember that. I, <laughs> I couldn't remember those details. Um, yeah, couldn't remember them. Obviously, a key difference with this is it's got the engine and it's also got electric motors and batteries as well. Mm. So you can't drive solely on electric on this. It doesn't have the range that the Leaf has. It hasn't got the big batteries, but the electric motor and the batteries are there are to assist the engine. So they assist in power delivery. You could, they recharge in a similar style of regenerative braking. Um, this is your daily, isn't it? Yeah, so I use this, this as my daily car. vehicle. Yeah. And considering, obviously it's quite a big engine. It's a 3.5 V6, mm. I do get, over 40 miles per gallon out of it. I can get sort of 40 to 45 out of it. That's on premium fuel. Um, so considering, all things considering, you do still get really good economy out of it. There is actually a, a, a clip in one of our previous videos, I put the link up there somewhere, and that is where we went to Black Mountain Pass in Wales, and that I managed to sit in here with James as we sort of crawled up, up to the top of Black Mountain Pass behind Ben's Three Lander 2. So you can have a look at the interior and how that, that works in there. Um, but we're sort of talking about practicality of these things. Um, one of the things that you don't have to have is a cable. Nope, you, so you don't, don't need to plug to it in. You don't need to plug um, it in. So you get the pros of the electric vehicle mm. and the pros of your general normal engine, engine, engine sort of petrol, diesel engines. You can get diesel hybrids, Lexus don't make them, but I know yeah. other manufacturers, I think Volvo make diesel hybrids. Um, other options as well are you can go in between. So you could get a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So that gives you best of both worlds. So if you want the extended range of and the, having the engine and that benefit and that range anxiety, you can obviously got you've got your engine, you've got your electric vehicle, which is great for your local stuff or you know shorter distances. If you want that sort of in between, you could get a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So you'll have less range than the normal electric. You could you're probably looking about depending on age, um, how old the battery is, and the, uh, stuff like that. You could get one that gets about 15 to maybe 30 miles on a single charge, which is perfect if you work five, 10 minutes down the road, you wanna pop to your local shops, go to the hairdressers, you can do it all on electric. So you've got all the perks of your electric vehicle right there. But you wanna go on holiday, you wanna do a 200, 300 mile trip to Devon, Cornwall, you wanna go up to Scotland, you've still got your engine. And again, it's exactly the same as the hybrid. You don't, you, you, you'll obviously have to plug this in for the, uh, for the batteries to charge. But if you're running it just on the engine, it doesn't need to be plugged in. As soon as the batteries de deplete, as soon as they go flat, the engine will kick in and take over. Um, they're really good, you know, really good idea. They work really well, so. Mm. But yeah, compared to your normal 
hybrids and electric vehicles, they're a nice in between, so you get both best of both worlds with those. And your, ba your battery in this, uh, am I right in thinking that's in the boot? So the battery on these is behind the rear seats on this. Ah, um, okay. Each car's slightly different. I know on the Prius, they're behind the rear seats and sort of under the under the boot floor. Yeah. On the plug-in electric Prius, they're all, it's all under the boot floor. Yeah. Um, but you lose that under tray storage on those. In this, it's behind the rear pa rear passenger seats right. on these. Um, there is another model of this, which is the GS350, which is the standard 3.5 litre V6 that doesn't have the batteries. That's just a standard car and it does have slightly bigger boot space. So you do lose a little bit of boot space having have the batteries put in there. So there is a, there is obviously a downside to the hybrid side. And obviously hybrid vehicles compared to the normal GS350, a little bit more pricey as well. So they are gonna be slightly more expensive to their normal counterpart. Mm. I'm all right, I'm thinking also you can't, um, if your passengers in the back, you can't go through to the boot, can you? There's you no, can't, no, no the rear seats like on this don't fold down. Blocked off. No, there's no through for like skis or anything like that. There's no yeah. through hole or anything like that, sadly. Um, no, there's nothing like that. So like you say, this gives you the extended range. You've got that, that yeah. um, lessened range anxiety if you're yeah. just driving a fully electric car like the Leaf. You've got the engine to take over and take on those longer trips. Yeah. Um, should we have... Should we have a quick look at the engine? Have a quick... Right, the Lexus hybrid drive engine, as we've seen here. Uh, got some orange cables and things. Yeah, so obviously, you tell us, James, what compared, to your, compared to the normal one, it's pretty much the same under here. So everything's pretty standard. You've got your standard engine. Mm. You know, you've got your oil dipsticks, you've got your brake fluids, you've got your, your coolants and various things for you know, like you would on any standard car. Yeah. So when it comes to general maintenance and looking after your vehicle and checking your tires and stuff for a long journey, this car is exactly the same. But what we have got is this little dude for over here, that's all your hybrid stuff. So you've got on these, again, different manufacturers do different things, but on the Lexus or on Toyota and Lexus, they use something called an eCVT, which is an electronic, an electronic continuous variable transmission. Um, which is it's a tongue twister that <laughs> <laughs> I won't go into the full science and talk about it there are loads of videos on YouTube if you really want to get into it um, a lot of it goes a little bit over my head but it's all to do with planetary gears and fancy stuff but basically it means it's got really nice really good really smooth power delivery and um, one of the things I love about hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles is the fact that their delivery for power is extremely smooth really smooth and it's instant torque you put your foot down in this and you feel it you know about it you know mm. you, you, it gives you a nice little bit of a kick gives you a boost doesn't yeah it? it's, you, it's just instant power isn't it it's it is yeah cool. i think naught to 60 on this specific one is five to six seconds i think it's just shy of six seconds around 5.7 give or take yeah um that's off the top of my head so it is instant torque it's instant power and if you're on a slower road you want to get past the truck you want to mm. get past the tractor which is in the way you put your foot down on this and it's there. It's instant and it's gone. You're, you're yeah. past it. Um, yeah, instant power delivery. That's one of my favorite things about them. Um, they are very good, very smooth, smooth running cars. Um, and they're very good maintenance on these. They are? Yeah. The, well, the life on these, I mean, we've had, well, I mean, I've had a few Toyotas. We've had a, between me and my, um, my father. My father's just recently sold his Toyota Prius. Now I know a lot of people give them a lot of hate. Mm. Granted, they are a little bit plasticky and maybe not the comfiest of cars, the nicest cars to look at, but they're extremely reliable. You I mean you yeah, can see right. why a lot of companies use them, especially taxi firms who do miles and miles and miles every year. Um, his sold recently with just shy of 500,000 miles, so it nearly hit that half a million mile mark. So, yeah, that's done 400,000 miles, so that's done a lot of mileage. And when we sold it, still going absolutely strong not a thing wrong with it i had a generation 2 toyota that done 250,000 when i sold it um so they do last and they last a very long time toyota and lexus so i do highly recommend them um they are really really good how many good miles cars. have you done in this um so this has done just over 100,000 this has so it's probably coming up to about 110,000 this one so this one hasn't yeah. done a massive amount yeah. but bear in mind this one is i want to say late 20, uh, 2012 2013 yeah uh, obviously got the private plate on it that it come with so it won't tell you but it's around it's around sort of late 2012 i think it is and the question that's probably going to be on everybody's minds have you had to replace the battery no 
it so has an actual original battery. battery. So original battery yep. in this. Okay, it is. So and I've got no issues with it. No problems with the original battery. It still okay. charges and depletes as it should do. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, you don't. You can drive on the battery, but yeah. so it still charges, depletes as it should do. Yeah. Um. So like I say, you can. You, it's not designed for driving on the electric battery for any more than a few miles. So any more than a mile, really. So, EV mode. There is an EV mode. It does let you drive the vehicle solely in electric vehicle mode. Um, the only thing different to this than the plug-in and the normal electric vehicle is its own design. It'll go max a mile if you're lucky, probably half a mile. Uh, it's more for if you want to move the car around the car park or you want to move it off the drive onto the road. It's just for little things like that. So you can start the car up without using the engine, without firing the engine up, if you just want to move it somewhere. Um, but that's there, that's EV mode. So a little bit of a chat there about James's Lexus and um, the advantages, disadvantages of a petrol hybrid. Let's take you over now to the electric Leaf and let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of going fully electric and hopefully try and um, answer some questions that you may have. So James's Leaf. The fully electric car you see before you is a used second-hand car, isn't it? It James? is, you yes. the second-hand um, not long after your Lexus. No. A year or two after, maybe? Yeah, it's about a year, old, a year or two older, this is, yeah. so it's around 2010-ish. Um, yeah, so we've had this about a month and a half now, so I bought it for my wife, she uses it. She only works in the village we're in now, and we live literally five minutes up the road in the next village, so it's perfect for her. And if you want to go to the shops in uh, Sainsbury's or Asda's, which are sort of 10, 15 minutes away, perfect little car. So I just want to talk a little bit about how we've got on with it, sort of things, trips we've done in it, general costs, day-to-day -day living. Is it worth it? Isn't it? Is it compared to the other options that are out there? Is it right for you? Is it right for us? The Leaf, we, like I say, we've had it about a month and a half. Most of the time we use it, it's for sort of 10, maybe 15 miles at a time. Absolutely perfect car for that, absolutely brilliant. Um, you, you get out in the morning, literally pop, 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 be plugged in there, pull it out, ready to go. Don't even have to visit a, visit a petrol station, it's always charged, always ready to go. Absolutely brilliant. We have done an interesting drive. We went to, we did take it to Devon. So we've done a 200 mile trip to Devon. 200 mile trip back that was a little bit of a different story this car so this comes in new stated they say around 160 miles range real real world you're probably looking at about 120 miles range i'm currently getting 90 miles max out of this so the battery has degraded over its lifetime which is one of the biggest things about electric cars the older they get the more the batteries degrade. It's like if you own a phone or, or a laptop or anything with a battery on it, you notice later on as the phone gets older, you're plugging it in more, the battery isn't lasting as long. Electric cars do have the same problem. So I'm down about 20% on this. So full charge is about 80% of what it would have been at new. So I'm looking at about 90 miles range. Realistically, depending on what I'm doing, I'm probably looking at 70 to 80. In the winter months, that's going to be even lower. I'm yet to drive into the winter months, so it'll be interesting to see what it's like in the winter. We took it obviously to Devon. Devon was a 200 mile trip. This only does 90 miles max. First time I'd done it, I think I arrived at the first uh, charging point with, I think, about six miles left in the battery, and I can confirm range anxiety was definitely there. It was definitely very nerve wracking. I was following every lorry, doing about 55 mile an hour, hoping I was going to make it. Um, it did do all right, it got there and back. The biggest issue wasn't actually the car. The car done absolutely amazingly. I did take three stops to charge it, but the problem wasn't, wasn't the car, it was actually the infrastructure. The charging infrastructure isn't there. At the current time, there isn't enough of it. So we pulled in, we stopped at uh, services, so we stopped at a couple on the M4. Um, every service we stopped at, they either the chargers weren't were out of use or there was two or three chargers shared amongst everyone who was using the services and obviously being a main motorway services a lot of electric vehicles a lot of people use them so that was the biggest issue so it turned a three and a half hour journey into about a seven hour journey six seven hour journey it made a massive difference um because this also quite expensive it was yeah so yeah. it take this is a 30 kilowatt hour battery so this of this model 
of its age that's the larger battery this is the 30 kilowatt hour um, on the fast charge I can charge it pretty quickly in about half hour 40 minutes mm. the problem was was you're waiting for an active charger to come free so you'll pull up and then you'll have to wait for somebody else to finish and there might be a queue so you could end up spending an hour or two at a charging point mm. and then once you're hooked up if there's two vehicles hooked onto the same charger that's then split the power's then split across two vehicles halving or doubling shall i say the charging time of the vehicle um also cost comes into it then so charging this at home for me so i'm on a specialist electric vehicle tariff which means between the hours of half past 12 and half past four in the morning i'm paying about nine pence an hour per kilowatt at the chargers you're looking at about 70 to 80 pence an hour per kilowatt so overall once i was when i was charging this on the on the public chargers it was actually costing me roughly the same it would mm. as if i took the lexus it's probably only a, a little bit cheaper than taking a lexus but it took twice as long to get there so my lessons learned next time i think i'll be taking the lexus for that which we've obviously discussed that you know the priorities of having that additional engine was so much nicer so yeah so it's, it's, it's obviously it's got its perks but yeah the long the long the long drive it wasn't for us in this sadly but say nothing wrong with the car the car done absolutely brilliantly the problem was the infrastructure mm. um and obviously every time you stop you, you know you got to get yourself a, you know a drink you get yourself yeah. a coffee or a hot chocolate you, you pop in for you know a burger or something so that adds up and then you know eventually you've ended up actually spending more than you have a petrol vehicle because you've got your electric charges which was charging me about I was probably spending about 11, 12 pounds charging this each time. Um, where at home on seven pence per kilo, uh, nine pence per kilowatt, a full 30 watt charge, you're probably looking at about two, three pounds. A full charge, 90 miles at about three quid, which is really good, really good. So that's where it really comes into its own. Is that really nice, cheap, yeah. cheap drive? Where obviously, so if you double that, 90, say, if you look at say 400 miles, you're probably looking at about 500. Uh, sorry four to five hundred miles you're probably looking at about five six pounds six say about ten pounds so let's just say ten pounds to do about 500 miles where four to five hundred miles on that you're looking at about 60 to 70 quid 60 70 pounds so it's a massive difference on the electric vehicles this is the time isn't it this, this is the, it the time it takes you to do a journey this is compared it to that is like half a day exactly and that would probably take two to three hours where you were exactly going, this is the thing yeah. this is the problem um, and like i say the problem is those 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 charges there's not enough of them the infrastructure is not there it's not great mm -hmm. Um, and there was one occasion as well, wasn't there, when you said, because uh, you, James was having to charge at multiple We were stopped three or four times, yeah. Didn't, you, didn't the battery go start So it did start to warm up. It yeah. did start to get a bit warm because we were constantly um, fast charging fast it. It did charging. start to get a bit warm. Yeah. It did start to enter a bit of a sort of the overheating zone on the battery. There are other EV vehicles out there that will actually do much greater distances. This is obviously an older one. Uh, older battery obviously the battery's degraded slightly so it's not getting as much range so there are obviously other electric vehicles out there i can't comment for them i've never driven one but i know there are ones out there that claim to do two two three two three hundred miles mm. obviously that will obviously make a big difference that'll be a much greater improvement so if you've got electric vehicles that will do that sort of range then brilliant the only problem is a lot of the higher mile of the, the vehicles that will do those higher miles are a little bit more newer they're a little bit more expensive. I mean, I got this one second hand um, and for its age, it's about as good as you're gonna get, but I still paid about 6,000 pounds for this vehicle. Um, the new, the next size up with the bigger batteries, you're looking about 10,000 um, pounds. So they are still quite pricey and they're pricey for the range you get. So the issue is if you've gotta be doing those longer ranges, those longer journeys, don't think it's quite there yet it's quite ready if that makes sense yeah. i think it's not necessarily the car's fault but the fact that the infrastructure needs improving and the price of electric vehicles needs to come down which is obviously it's newer technology so the technology is still obviously coming down or getting cheaper i know toyota are currently in the process of designing a whole new battery system which they've claimed is about seven eight nine hundred kilometers miles not sure if it's kilometers or miles but yeah. either way obviously that's a huge jump when that comes out yeah that won't be coming out though the state for another uh well probably about 2025 2027 
Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a, we're a few years off that. But if that comes out, that's going to really open up the uh, electric car market. That make a huge amount of difference. Because mm. um, obviously then, even if it's real world range was four five hundred miles, that's the same as that. That's yeah. four five hundred miles, and you could get to somewhere like Devon and back on that. Or if you wanted to go to Scotland, it might not do it in one trip. But charging, you'd only have to do one stop and one charge. So yeah. that will be, that's when the technology is going to grow. Which you'd probably do anyway, as a natural yeah. comfort break. Exactly, um, exactly. But with this, you, you had to do several stops. Yeah, didn't you? we had to do, um, we've done three stops in total charging this uh, on the way, three stops on the way back. So the technology is improving, it's on its way, the technology is coming. Um, so if you're thinking about getting an electric car, but you're really not sure about that range anxiety, maybe a hybrid or a plug-in may be your way to go, and then wait for the technology to come that we get greater range. I was chatting to someone who's uh, had an electric vehicle for quite some time. They had a uh, one of these, but a van, it was a Nissan van electric vehicle. And they were telling me when they used to plug in, just going back a few years ago now, the, the infrastructure was much worse then. So the infrastructure has improved. The charging has improved. It is getting better. It just needs to get a bit more better. Um, but you compare these to Tesla though. So when we charged up, we might have two. But you look at the Tesla, Tesla had sort of about 12 charging points. Uh, and they can still use, I think they can use the, uh, the CCS charging style. So I think they can use share our chargers with us. Um, and there is talks of Tesla opening up their their charging network so other EVs can use it. Um, they have a lot more chargers, and obviously they have the better range and the technologies there. Um, but but it's all sort of, it's like James said, it's got to get better. It's got to get better, isn't it? it? Has, it's got to get yeah. cheaper. That's the other thing. It's got to so get when cheaper. Toyota obviously developed this battery, mm. so uh, the impression I get when the batteries are released is going to go into the hybrid vehicles. Um, and then once they've got it refined, it's saying they're going to then solely pull it into electric vehicles. So I think the future of the, for example, the Prius, I think its future is eventually become a solely a purely electric vehicle. Um, but obviously when that comes out, you're probably still going to be looking at about a £50,000 car. Mm. So again, that price needs to come down. Oh, so realistically, it could be another 10, 15, maybe 20 years before the technology and EV vehicles become much more cheaper and available to to the masses unless you without going down the financing route um but i said there are used ones out there you've got this which i pay like I say around about six thousand for which is perfect for day-to-day -day driving to work yeah and going to the shops this is it this is it, this is it. Yeah. for all that this car is absolutely brilliant mm. like i say at three pounds to fully charge this thing you know that's so much yeah. cheaper than your normal car like something like that which is obviously getting like 30 miles per gallon. Yeah, I'm not you know. sure how that got there. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Lexus there. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure how that got there. But yeah, it, it, it's a big, it's a big change, isn't it? It's something we're we're, we're going through as a generation now. Yeah. We're, we're we're having to experience these. And sort of embrace the future. Yeah, we're having we? to embrace. We're yeah. having to go from the dinosaur over there to to this. Um, electric gizmo now yeah. and it's 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 hard but we're we're, we're trying to we're trying to change yeah. um batteries I, I don't know whether we covered it um the battery in this have you had to replace it so no this has got the original battery, original battery. but like i said we are down 20 percent. so it's yeah. the, uh, so a full charge is 80 percent of what it would have been mm. as a fully charged uh well as a brand new vehicle with its new battery mm. but i the battery so it degrades with the age of the vehicle with the amount of miles the vehicle's doing. Um, also, if it's constantly being re rapid charged, is it being constantly left at full charge? There are a lot of factors that come into play. Mm. I know a lot of new manufacturers now, they give you the option to be able to set charging limits. So what a lot of them are saying is you charge up to 80% unless you're going to do a full, unless you wanted the extra miles. So if you're using it day to day, charge up to about 80%. Um, if you're going to be using the vehicle for a really long drive, then you can put up to 100%. They don't like being left at 100% all the time. That does seem to increase the speed at which the, the batteries do degrade. Um, and you don't it. rent the battery off this, do you? No, so we own the battery. Yeah. So this come with the battery already owned. But I know a lot of uh, a lot of manufacturers what they're doing now. Take for example the Renault Zoe. Um, that is a that's done on a leasing system. So when you purchase the vehicle. 
you have an option. So you can either purchase the vehicle and the battery as a whole unit, like you would any other car, or you could purchase the vehicle and then lease the battery. So you'll pay, a, you'll buy the vehicle, but then pay an additional monthly subscription to have the battery. That's then on a lease system. Um, I'm not sure what happens at the end of that lease. I don't know if there's any way you can extend a lease for a new battery. I would say that's not something I've, I've, I've looked into because uh, we, we own our battery, thankfully. We own the battery for this vehicle. Um, but obviously the problem is when the battery does finally go, you then got to think, is it worth the cost of the battery over the worth of the car? Um, there are, I've, you know, I've done research on these and there are ones on there on sort of eBay or uh, Auto Trader which are going quite cheap but then you look at them and you go, well, hang on, that's only got a maximum of about 40 miles, which is perfect if you're only going to the shops, perfect, but we want just a little bit more of a reassurance. I like to know that I've got a, a reserve in the battery, so I like to know I've got this, if I'm doing a 50 mile journey, I like to know I've got an extra 20 miles in there mm. if I have to divert or there's a problem at the charging station, you know, I don't want to get to a charging station and have five miles left and turn up and go oh no they're not working or they're out of use because then you're scarpered yeah. you know you can't just go down to the garage and get a jerry can and chop top it up no. after it's a bit harder on these and the battery runs flat it's a bit more serious recovery job it's more of a yeah. recovery job you're gonna to have to get someone out then that is one of the biggest downsides you run out of juice you're gonna know about it um there's there's no going to get a uh, you, you can't get a uh, jerry can full of electricity and try and pour it in. Oh, <laughs> along essentially, you can. It's only no. so far. There you go. Okay, uh, let's let's have a look underneath the bonnet because uh, they are different to your conventional, your conventional yep. um, combustion engine car over yep. there. So let's ha let's have a look under the bonnet and um, go through that, and then we'll show you the life of the electric car. So plugging it in, etc., etc. Um, engine well it's not the engine is it no. it's an electric motor in here yeah is what so we've got. something a little bit different to what you're probably normally used to looking at <laughs> so is yeah it's, well you can see the floor i was going to say where, where is it <laughs> 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 there's space so you've literally got um it's basically just a big electric motor so you've yeah. got all your electronics on top then you've got your electric motor underneath which will go to i'm guessing a fixed uh gearbox mm. um so just be able be what a single speed sort of gearbox um which will just take the power from the motor into the wheels or into the drivetrain. That's pretty much as simple as that on these. There's not much to it, you know, you haven't got your dipsticks and all that stuff no, to worry about. It's, it's really basic, it isn't is it? That's a basic. screen wash, is that? Or what, what is that? Or some sort of coolant? Uh, a screen wash is there, so I think that's just the coolant. So after the electric motor still requires coolant. Ah. Um, so you've got coolant there, screen wash, screen wash, and then, um, yeah, fluid brake there, fluid, and that's it. it. Yeah, everything else on it is uh, electronically, <clears throat> electronically done. And a tiny little 12 volt battery well yeah because obviously this the 12 volts not do... required to turn the engine over on this so yeah. if you have a bigger 12 volt i mean the one in the land rovers is quite big because it's turning over a big engine yeah it's a massive this engine. just turns the computer on you get in there you press the button all that does is turn the computer on and then that tells the rest of the car what to do the main the main battery on this will then turn obviously the the well the electric motor is your, yeah. is your electronics in the car powered by that then? So like your headlights and yeah. things like that? Yeah, so that, that's that. your auxiliary. So yeah. your auxiliaries will be done via the 12 volt, like you, like you do your normal car. Yeah. Um, like your normal car, auxiliaries are done by a 12 volt, but the, obviously the hybrid does the main, or the hybrid, I say hybrid, wrong car. The electric battery obviously mm. does the, the, the main yeah. driving bit of it. Of course, another thing I haven't got in here is an air filter. Nope. I haven't got an air filter, there's none nope. of that in none here. None of that, no. Nope. Uh, I take it you probably have a pollen filter. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's still got your standard sort of climate your, control your, and all that. pollen bits. Um, um, but I can say it's very basic, but mm, it it's is. easy easy to look after, easy enough to maintain. Um, less less to go wrong, really. Obviously, it's all electronic, so if mm. anything is going to go wrong, it's going to be electronically, it's the electronic side. Yeah. Um, yeah. So on this particular on this particular car, so on the Nissan Leaf, yep. or this this version anyway, this this is your charging. This yep. is where you'd be charging at. Which we'll show you that. Um, yep. That's at the front of the car. Of yep. Some cars now they're they're having it down the side, yeah. aren't they? Um, and and you can pop that open with the key. I think you just so that's where you uh, that's where you charge. So you've got that's where we plug the the house in. So if I'm charging off the house, I plug it in there. Then if I'm using a public charger, which is obviously a much greater charger speed, I use that. At the moment, at home, I charge using what they call the, what's nicknamed the granny charger, which is basically plugged, it's just plugged into a normal wall outlet. Just plugs, so we've got it currently just plugged into a, a plug in the kitchen. I think it's about three kilowatts of power. You can also get uh, external wall chargers, so you could have a wall charger mounted to your house. They give about, I think they're seven kilowatts, up to about seven kilowatts of power. 
Um, so obviously it gives almost twice as much power, you know, in an hour. Mm. Um, so obviously it'll take, charges your car much quicker. Us not doing many miles on this, and obviously being the smaller battery, we've just stuck with the, the slow, slow charge, it's all we need. Mm. Tops it up more than enough overnight, it's more than fast enough for what we need it to do. And that's just um, a three pin plug. That's just a three pin plug, plug just plugs home, into yeah. normal, normal plug, easy yeah. enough. And then you've got that, which is obviously much higher rated. A and I think one. on this, it's I think the higher rated I want to say is 50 kilowatt hours. Yeah. Um, it will take, which is obviously much faster than three or even seven. Um, so hence why it does charge very quick. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's in there, nice and simple. Pop it away, which is great because if I get home, I pull up on my drive. As soon as I get in, pop the pop, pop the thing, grab the charger, plug it in. And I'm in. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Next morning, I come on out, pull it out, close my thing, and that's it. And away I go. Car's ready for me to go. It's got a full battery, and off I go on my adventures. Simple as that. I've never got to worry about. A lot of people are always worried, you know, about running out of charge. What, what, what if you know I get in it in the morning? It's only got 30% battery in it, but it won't. If you keep it plugged in, or if you plan ahead, or you know, you charge it overnight, you'll come out every morning and your car will be ready to go. You'll have a nice charged battery. You'll be ready to roll. And you've got this on a timer, haven't I've you? I've got this on a timer. So like clever. I say, between half 12 and half four, I get those cheaper cheaper rates. So instead of spending, say, 20, 25 uh, pence per kilowatt during the day, during those hours, I'm spending nine pence per kilowatt. And in the car, I've told the car, even though it's plugged in, I've told the car not to charge until half past 12 or between half past 12 at night and half four in the morning, at which point it'll then start charging and then I'll get that nice cheap rate and nice cheap, you know, nice cheap run. Um, the other quirky thing you can do as well in the winter months, you can tell it to defrost as well. I can, so I can, quite cool. I can set either in the car, I can set a timer for the climate control or I can even do it on my phone and turn it to turn the climate control on. That's very clever. On the newer models, you have even more control over that by setting the temperatures. Uh, I think on some vehicles, you can tell them to do all sorts. I know on Tesla, you can pretty much do everything on the vehicle. Um, turn on the heat seats, turn on the heated wheel, um, which is amazing in the winter, because you'll get up, come downstairs, go, you know, have your whatever, get yourself ready for it, come out, car's defrosted, it's all ready to go, just unplug it, in you nice go. Nice and warm. And away you go. In you go. And away you go. It's, the car is ready for you. So you haven't got that panic of, uh, yeah. oh, well, I don't know if I'm going to have enough juice in it or is it going to be ready? No, there's none of that. Or if you're running late yeah. for work and you've got, say you've got the dinosaur over there and you've got to wait about five, ten minutes yeah. to defrost, this is ready to go, isn't yeah. it? You've got this ready to go, which would be very interesting when you come yeah. into the winter months to try it. Uh, see, other comments I see as well on electric vehicles, obviously they do get a lot of hate. You see a lot of hate for these. Um, and a lot, another comment you see quite often is traffic jams. You're sat on a busy road or you're sat in heavy traffic and everybody else is sat there with their engine running and you're sat there with your, as what people say, your electric motor running. So that means you're sat there wasting all your electricity and you're going to run out of battery. Well, no, because when you're stationary, it's not using any power to move the vehicle. So you're not using any power. Yeah. The only thing that's going to be using power is your auxiliaries. So it will be using a very, very, very small amount of that battery. So even sat in standing still traffic, you're not using the battery. So you're not losing any range. Mm. So it's not a massive, that's not a massive, you know, bad thing sitting in traffic. Yeah. Whereas something, you know, your big guzzlers, they're going to be sat there with your engine running, burning away your fuel, yeah. you know, idling away. This isn't, you're not going to lose any range sitting in traffic. That isn't going to be a, a big issue. A lot of people panic because they think, you know, we're going to be stuck in traffic and we're going to be using all that power. Mm. You're not, you, you, you're not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't need it. You only use the battery when it's required to turn the motor over. And if the wheels aren't spinning, the motor's not spinning, no power coming from the battery. So therefore you're not going to run out of battery. Um, something else with this I've noticed as well, having done obviously a trip to Devon, there's a lot of motorways, is you do find, again, can't comment for other electric vehicles, but on this, you do find it does use it quite quickly on the motorways. So I stuck to around 65 miles per hour to try and get a nice, not use the battery too much around 70 i mean it will do happily cruise at motorway speed with no issue whatsoever but obviously it does use the battery a little bit quicker it does you know it just it does get through it a little bit more um on the back road so climbing the hills in devon going up and down and up and down you know riding the roller coaster of devon done amazingly if anything i actually gained range my range actually improved 
So um, riding the hills in Devon, actually, it was actually That's really good. Not so bad. Well, what's interesting is because you're going up and you're using that battery. Yeah. But you come back down the other side, um, the, the motor now becomes a generator. It generates, so it puts yeah, all that power, going back down that hill, all that power goes back into the battery. Back in. So you're making it back again. So it actually done really well on the hills. It really impressed me. Really, really impressed me. Yeah. Yeah, it really impressed me. But like I say, the, the, the only issue was that was the public. But like I say, with the public chargers though, I did find that using, so we used the, on the way up, we used all the motorway chargers. But I did find using the, the smaller places, so stopping at like a, a fast food restaurant mm, a um, or a supermarket, yeah. which still have the, you know, the 50, 75 kilowatt chargers, the high speed chargers, they weren't as busy and they were yeah. better yeah. maintained and they worked. So I found those actually a much better, better. much better use. Mm. So if you are planning on doing a longer journey, look at stopping at places like that. Yeah. Uh, instead of using the motorway services, which are really busy, think ahead and think, oh, look at the fast food ones. Mm. They are really good apps as well. You've got to think Zap Map, I think might be one of them or something along those lines. So really good apps out there, which help you plan your routes around electric vehicles as well, yeah. around your chargers and things like that. So you can, and it also shows, because they're all linked up by the network, which ones are in use, people can put comments on them, whether they're working or not. So I do recommend using those and doing a little bit of planning before you do a long journey. You do have to think about it a little bit more instead of just getting in and going. You do have to think, well, where am I going to stop? Where am I going to charge? What charging cables or what types can I use there? Um, so things like that. You do have to sort of plan it a little bit better. But I can say they are really good cars. And a lot of people yeah. as well think they're quite slow. Um, I mean, this isn't by any means the quickest of electric vehicles, but not to sort of say 30, 40 miles an hour. You put your foot down in this and you, you, it does give you a good shot, but it does go. Speed already, isn't You're it? up to speed. It's From about sort of above that speed, then it does start to bleed off a little bit. The power starts to bleed off. Um, it's not as quick, but it's still there if you want to overtake again, like a tractor or a truck, or you're overtaking something on the motorway, you put your foot down, it is there, it will do it. Um, it, will, it, will, it will pull. So they're not by any means slow cars because they're talky. Everything's instant. You haven't got to wait for your engine to spool up to its good to its maximum rev range. Yeah. It's instant torque. It's, it's instantly there. A lot like how the Lexus works as well with that CVT. It's instant power and instant go. Brilliant. And no oil changes as well, is there? It's just not on this. No electric motor. It's just no. You know. There's nothing there. I think on some electric vehicles, um, me and Ben were just discussing about this a minute a moment ago about Tesla. I think they have oil filters and stuff for the oil system for the electric motors, right. but the emo motors on those require an oil change. An oil but change. again, I don't own a Tesla, so I couldn't really yeah. comment on that. Um, but I do think Teslas do require them. Yeah. But overall, you've, you've quite enjoyed having oh, it. Oh, we love it. I say it's my wife's it. car, and yeah. she absolutely loves this car. Absolutely mm. adores it. She she really enjoys driving it. Um, it's a very, for a little car as well, I mean, it's not a big car. No. Well, it's very spacey. Boots, more than generous enough for what we use it for. And it's quite high spec, isn't it? Spec. Um, so it's this is, the... it is, so yeah, this is the top, this is the top uh, model, or top range, sort of, within this, within this model. It's got a few little extras, um, heated heated wheel, heated seats, things like that, yeah, little things. It's got 360 interior. degree camera, so there's, camera under there you've got a camera under the wing mirror so when you're in it and you're reversing you've got full camera coverage around the vehicle the other thing about these is they're easy to drive very light very easy to drive very easy just get in and go yeah such nice cars to drive and quite a nice easy little drive yeah honestly can't fault the driving in one of these they are very good very good driving you know driving i mean we we went out to go and get you now we went out to go and get air in the car um we well, i must admit we didn't think electric vehicle didn't even cross our mind mm. we were looking at um ct200 so lexus we we're looking at toyota Arises, so the 1.8 hybrids that you see in the prius and we were at a dealership and the dealer you know dealer turned around and said to us oh we've got a leaf we do want to have a go in the leaf so it was a newer version than this but he said would you like to have a go and i thought oh i've never driven one before yeah we'll have a go why not yeah well, she absolutely loved it. She fell in love with this Leaf immediately. We both did. It was such a nice car to drive. The power was there, the delivery, the, the comfort. It was comfy, it was responsive, and it was easy. Really easy to just get in and go. Really easy. Um, then we fell in love with it. And we thought, well, I'm going to do some more research. Unfortunately, the one we were looking at was outside of our range, our budget, sort of our price. So we ended up settling for the slightly older model, but I can't fault it. 
like I say, it's done brilliant. Even on the 200 mile drive to Devon, it's done superb. Yeah. It's just let down by the, the, the infrastructure that's out there was what let it down, not the car. Yeah. The car done absolutely perfect. And like I said, I can't fault the vehicle. Um, yeah, really good little car, really good little car. Um, right, we're gonna take you on a little trip. We're gonna go to a, um, a charging station in the village. Uh, well, just outside the village, I think, or next yeah. village on. Yeah, uh, yeah, we should go next to the next village, village yeah. Yeah, and um, just show you the process of what you have to do when you own one of these electric cars. And yeah, um, follow us, follow us there. Oh, well. So we're in the leaf. Yeah, welcome to the leaf. Here we are. So the first thing, first thing you'll notice about the leaf is, listen. Yeah, it's very quiet. As a motorbike goes past. Yeah, it, Ignore yeah, the motorbike, but that's not me. Really motorbike, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> well, I think the first thing you'll notice is just how peaceful and quiet this vehicle is. Yes. Yeah, it's just how quiet this car is. So, got, oh, did we mention about miles on here? So you've got 120. This has done 120, yeah. Thousand miles, which. Yeah, so this has done uh, 120,000 miles this car um, and so yeah 120,000 we've lost like I said about 20% so I'm down to 80% yeah which isn't too bad considering it's what 10 11 years old it's yeah they're doing all right so I think it's pretty it shows sort of the you know how much they do degrade by yeah. I mean there are others out there which done higher mileage which have really degraded by quite a lot you know they're down to sort of 30 percent 40 percent remaining yeah uh, which isn't great so we're at the moment and uh, i've got 22 miles in the car um i've deliberately left it all week without charging it uh, my wife has been using it uh, you can leave this without charging it you can um leave it for a few well a, a good week and you won't lose you won't really lose any battery so you know you haven't got to worry about letting it sit for a week yeah um we've deliberately been using it all week without charging it because i'd like to go and plug it in now take you all to a uh, a public charger, public charger. so we'll, we'll um, see the, 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 um, the, the procedure yeah show you just uh, how easy, easy it is to use one of these public chargers just show you the ease of these 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 chargers i was just looking at it you've got heated seats in yeah here. heated seats yeah. heated wheel yeah let's say this is the the higher higher range sat now sat now yeah. yeah it's got all the fancies all the extras and like we were saying earlier it's got the um timer as well so you can you know put yeah. the timer in the winter which i think is really quite cool it is yeah i'd yeah. say like, really easy to use and like i say you, you you come off so i'm in dynamic brake mode now so if i come off the power as i'm slowing down now all that power is going back into the battery oh, i'm not yeah. wasting i didn't touch the brakes there so you know oh, well, i haven't touched the brakes yeah. all that is now going back into the uh into the battery the battery so the, that's when you're setting so that's the difference between d and b d there. and b so that's uh, obviously b slows down a little bit more d still does the regenerative but it's not as strong it's not as strong. Right, okay, that's quite interesting. And it's a bit more normal, it feels a bit more like an engine braking. Yeah. Where B is like you've changed right the way down to the gears, you've yeah, got a really you strong yeah, engine brake. Come off there. Yeah, and like I say, a bit of power, and it's not yeah, a slow it's... car, it does get back up to speed more than you know, quick enough. Yeah. But the drive in it is very smooth. It's such an easy car to drive. The steering's very light, I can do it with my little finger. Yeah. Um, because the steering's electronic in this. Um and as I say, it's very quiet, it's very peaceful, yeah. such a nice drive. You know, if you like a nice quiet car, this is definitely for you, definitely. Such a nice car to drive, I cannot fault it, not in the slightest. Um, like I say, we've done, you know, we done 200 miles in this and like yeah. I say, I cannot, I cannot fault the car. I must admit, the, car, the, the actual seats are quite comfy, They're not they? too bad, yeah, they're, they're a little bit bad. on the firm side. I mean, it's yeah. a smaller sort of hot hatch, so it's expected. Mm. Um, they are a little bit firmer, a little bit harder. Um, you know, it's not you know, it's not that of the Lexus, but you know, oh, you've got electric windows. Yeah, electric windows. Yeah. yeah, but no, it's a very smooth, nice little drive. Yeah, no, I can't fault it. Like I say, I love, I love, I love. You know, we both love driving, and it's funny. Mm. You know, even though I've got the Lexus, which is a really nice car, I love to drive, much more luxurious. And we've got the Range Rover, you know, big V8 gas guzzler. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. When I'm not in the Range Rover, I really miss driving the Range Rover. Yeah. I love driving the Lexus. I do enjoy driving on the longer journeys. Yes. Really comfy, love, lovely on the longer journeys. But we use this all the time. Yeah. We just for, purely for its ease. It's easy. 
It's a really easy drive, really easy drive. It's always ready to go, it's so cheap. So we're running up to the shops or we're going out, you know, going out for a meal, going into town. We jump in this, because yeah. it doesn't cost us anything. No. You know, it doesn't cost us anything to use. It's dirt cheap, it's really easy. You know, you haven't got to wait, worry about the engine having to warm up, uh, to warm up things like the cats and stuff. It's, it's always ready to go, always ready to go. And that's what I love about this car, is you just jump in and go. Simple as that. Just jump in, go. You haven't got to worry about, oh, have I got enough fuel to get there? You know, or do I need to put fuel in the car? No, because it's ready. Yeah. The car's ready to go. You know, it's, it's, it's always eager to go. No, I'd say, cannot fault it. I think one of my things with electric cars is that irritation of the lead. The, yeah. The, the electrical lead, but like like we were saying, well, with your house, you've literally just got it there, haven't you? Yeah. Like the window and you just, you just plug in. This and is this it. Is, this is us here. So this is us here, look. Yeah. So we're pulling in. That's a Ben can go next to the yeah. coffee shop in the, in the disco, the old dinosaur. <laughs> Right, we'll um, show you what happens. So. Yeah, so we'll jump out and we'll show you just how easy it is to charge an electric vehicle. Yeah. We've now come to an electric charger, which is in James's village. Um, we pop, we pop this electric thing open here. This is what you have to do now. <laughs> so this is normally where you get a petrol pump and you put in there, but that's not happening on these. So yeah, you've got an app or something. Have you got an app? Um, no, what, I just, you do? I literally just take the uh, charger that is designed for this vehicle, which okay. is so a pod point that one. here. Quite, so, that's quite a big, hefty thing. Plug it in. Wow. Look at the size of that lead. <laughs> oh yeah, so it's coming kind of SMS or app. Yep, so. Okay. Literally just gonna touch card against that. So it's doing this all automatically. Processing, the thank oh, you. Yeah, okay. Bending, so just give it a minute and it should. You don't have to press the button. It should come to life. <laughs> uh, super. Oh, there we go. Ah, press start. There we, there we go. Press start. I can't use the pod points. And there we go. So we're at 20, we've got 20% 20 battery in at the moment. Oh, okay, and then it's sort of, it's going to. Sort yeah, so it's, it's talking to the car. There we go, car's just connected. Oh, yeah. And we're now charging. And it's locked as well, so you can't just disconnect no, it. No, can't disconnect it. Someone can't walk up to and disconnect it. And the only way. Disconnect it and stop. Yeah, you'd have to physically stop it. Yeah. Okay, Not about so got, stopping the charge. Got a red light on there, so that means it's charging. And you've got your lights on Lights on the dash, on the right, and now the vehicle's charging. And it is literally as simple as that. And it's the same at home as well. So this, unlike your motorway, this isn't telling us. How Each one's different, different so there's different yeah. ones. Services use different ones, so your fast food might use different. Everybody just uses the ones they, 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 they've had installed, so yeah. each one's different. But the, the principle is the same at all of them, all just as easy to use. And this is what you do at home as well, which is even easier. You don't have to do any of that. You just mm. pick up your wire, plug it in, go in your house. That's it. So now we can wander off now. We can go off to the shops, go off to the pub, go well. have a drink, <laughs> yeah. go have a meal. And that's it. We'll come back. Away. Is that now charging it? So that's 0.6 kilowatts. So I think. Some of them tell you what it's charging at. Yeah. This is telling me how much it's put in it. In so it I think already. it's put 0.6 in already and we're at 23% exactly. charge. Wow, and you can hear the fans on this yeah. thing. This thing is, is spooling out because of the amount of power yeah. that it's putting in, the heat that's being generated probably. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, and how long it's connected for? One yeah. minute. Or uh, as you see, a minute in, we're 4% up. Yeah. So now we just leave it at that. Press the card, and it's telling you on there how much on um, on, on James's card it's, it's going to charge him. So at the moment, it's charging him a whole penny uh, for the one kilowatt of electricity he's put in. So really cheap at the moment. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll um, go and take a quick walk, yep. and, and we'll come back. And we're back. So you join us, and the this actually this pod has a name. It's called the Leela Maisie. <laughs> believe it or not, so yeah. you you identify these things on an app. So this one's called the Lila Maisie. Anyway, okay, so within 11 minutes, we've got 64% battery. So we've increased by what's that? 44%. We've yeah, 44%. Up, and we've extra. gained. So that's a 7.7 .7 kilowatts hours we've put in the vehicle. 
Um, obviously that's charging at a nice rate. When you hit about 80% on these, the um, charging rate does slow down quite a bit. It's, it's, to, it's to protect the life of the battery. Yeah. Um, it's for the battery itself. You hit, and the same I think on any electric vehicle, you hit a certain percentage, so I think it's about 80%. Yeah. The charger will slow down a lot. So it's recommended that you charge up to about 80% unless you really need that extra bit. Mm. Um, so yeah, you charge up to about 80%. That's all you need. And it's as simple as that, really. So you press stop and then... So it's, it said on there a penny, but I yeah. suppose when you do the stops, it's got to obviously slow things slow down, through. isn't it? So yeah. literally just gonna, thing. Each, each one's slightly different. I'm literally just gonna present my card. Oh yeah. Let's see how much you had to pay for 11 minutes of charging. Six pounds forty six. Six pounds forty six, and that gave me forty, well, forty seven percent. So you can see the difference there. So that's yeah. cost me six pounds forty six, which is double what I'd probably pay at home yeah. for a full zero to one hundred percent charge. charge yeah. So zero percent to one hundred percent, you're looking at about three pounds. Here, just for forty seven percent, it's cost me nearly seven pounds. So it shows you that these really aren't worth it if you're doing a longer journey you're not really actually saving that much because that's probably giving me about an extra well about 35 to 40 miles um yeah i mean what's given us 47 percent so you're probably looking at about 40 miles about that, about 35 40 miles out of that yeah at six pounds which is not great really so again the, mm. the infrastructure public charging you're, yeah you're not really saving much are you really it's yeah. a tad expensive. It is. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's obviously it's there, so it's yeah. good. You know, it's useful having it. So you um, disconnect your hair dryer. That's it. Plug that back in, and that's ready for the next next that's person. That's ready for the next person. Plug in. So I guess that's that's where we are now. Um, this this is going to be potentially our our future. There's a lot more people having electric cars. So I hope you found this video interesting. Um, yeah, there we are. Yeah. I don't think we've got anything more to say. I hope you enjoyed it. It was something different. We wanted to show you uh, the life and the experience of owning one of these things. Um, next video coming up is, as promised, is our Welsh video. And that is when we go exploring uh, the valleys of the Elan Valley in Wales. I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Take care for now, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.